The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 to 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, Apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ whom God put forth as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes a boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. 
For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. It was show and tell day at school and the theme was my religion. Three students stood before the class. The first student said, I'm Jewish and this is my prayer hat or yarmulke. The second student said, I'm Catholic and these are my rosary beads. The third student said, I'm Lutheran and this is my casserole. By the way, do you know how many Lutherans it takes to screw in a light bulb? I don't know, but if it's on the front row, it's never going to get fixed. Today's Reformation Sunday. On this day, we get to reflect in part how it is we came to be known as Lutherans. Dennis Wise idolized the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. He still does today. In fact, his love for Elvis has taken him to some bizarre heights and bizarre lengths. He's even had his face lifted and his hair line contoured by a plastic surgeon in order to look like Elvis Presley. He once told reporters about his passion for the king. He said, ever since I was five years old, I idolized Elvis. I have every album he's ever made and I even have leaves from his yard. Unfortunately, however, he never got to see Elvis up close and personal. He says, I once stood on the wall of Graceland for 12 hours trying to get a glimpse of him, but there were so many people around him, I never stood a chance. Poor fellow. Standing on the walls outside of Graceland for hours, but never getting to see the king. Once there was a studious young monk in a convent in Erfurt, Germany, who desperately wanted to see God. And while he didn't have a facelift, he did everything else he thought possible to be the person he believed God wanted him to be. But he was haunted by his own sin. And so he fasted. He prayed. He read his Bible constantly. But there was no joy in his faith. He was obsessed with the fear of hell. And while he tried to repent as best he thought he could, he never felt he was fully forgiven. He was a desolate young man. It was as if he was standing on the walls of his own Graceland, desperately trying to see the king, but prevented from doing so by his own sense of unworthiness. And then, in the spring of 1513, this monk's eyes was open to a truth in scripture he had never noticed before, that we are saved not by our works, but by God's grace. This transformed monk, Martin Luther would write, it was as if the gates had swung open and I had entered into paradise. You know, I can't help but wonder how many people, even though we've heard Luther's story before, even though we've heard pastors preach about it before, how many of us still find ourselves standing on the wall of Graceland, looking longingly inside, but desperately desiring to see the king, but still feel as if we can't? Here's the first thing. Do we really believe that salvation is by grace and grace alone? Now, I know we've heard about it, but do we believe it? Maybe you know the story of the Sunday school teacher who was trying to teach her 
class about grace. One day she said to them, now, if I sell my house and my car and give all my money to the poor, will that get me into heaven? No, shouted the class. Well, then said the teacher, if I clean the church every day, mow the yard, keep it neat and tidy, would that get me into heaven? The class shouted, no. Well, then how do I get into heaven? Asked the teacher. The little five-year-old boy in the back of the room shouted, you got to be dead first. Well, you know, technically speaking, he's correct. But I have to applaud that teacher for trying to help her class see the broader picture. The Christian faith is not about what we do for God, but about what God has already done for us. In the spring of 1513, what Luther saw that opened the gates of Graceland for him turned the world of religion on its head. In Luther's time, the church taught that God was passive and humanity was active. That is, God sat on the throne reigning and humanity scurried around trying to gain God's favor. But Luther saw a different reality. One in which God is the active one and we are the passive recipients. That salvation is a gift from God given to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Or as Paul writes about it in our scripture from Romans, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we are justified by grace as a gift by those who have been transformed and redeemed through Christ Jesus, who was put forward as an atonement of salvation through his blood, effective through faith. A student in a youth ministry class of, at Hannibal LaGrange College in Missouri learned this lesson from his professor. The student had left work early in order to get some last minute uninterrupted study and when he arrived at the classroom there were other students already there doing their final prep. Eventually the professor entered the room and announced that he would give them a quick study review before administering the test. Most of the material was from the study guide but there was some material that the students weren't familiar with. And when they questioned the professor, the professor said that information came from the book and that they were responsible for all the content of the book as well. Well, the students couldn't argue with that. When the test time came, the professor asked that all students keep their exams face down on their desk until he told them to turn it over and begin. When he told them to turn it over and begin, the students discovered that all the answers had already been filled in. And at the bottom of the last page, the professor had written, this is the end of the final exam. All the answers are correct. You will receive an A for the final exam. Please note that the reason that you have received this grade is because the creator of the test has taken it for you. And none of your work or studying did anything to get you this grade. You have experienced grace. And then the professor went around the room asking each student, what grade did you get? Did you deserve that grade? How much did your study and prep do to help you get this grade? Now the student who was telling about this experience said, I'm not a crier by any means of the imagination, but I had to hold back tears as I answered those questions and realized that the creator of the test had taken it for me. Afterwards, the professor said, I have tried all semester to say that you are a recipient of God's grace. And he said he'd never given a test like that before and probably never will ever again. But he felt based on the content of the discussions in this particular class that this class needed to experience grace. Not to just hear about it, but to experience. We all need to experience grace in our lives. Every one of us. 
And we need to experience it, not here, but here, here in the heart. Now here's the second question for today. Do we realize that grace is about freedom? Jesus says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Would you agree with me that there are a lot of uptight Christians in the world? But in the story of Luther, we find a person who has been set free and who is bathing in this glorious freedom. Not that he shirked his responsibilities. On the contrary, look how he applied himself. He translated the Bible into German. He wrote 400 works from pamphlets to books. He wrote 125 hymns, including the well-known song, The Mighty Fortress. But now his work, instead of being a burden, had now become a joy. To think of it in biblical terms, he was not merely doing good works, but he was bearing good fruit. Good works is something that you, you work at, you, you strain to get, you grit your teeth and you get it done. But good fruits is something that is born naturally from a transformed heart. Luther was a person who knew freedom and it, his life was overflowing with praise and passion. Reformation. This Reformation Day is about faith and about freedom, but above all, it is about God and what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. So how about you? Do you still feel as if you're standing on the wall, looking longingly in the Graceland? Well, it's time to come down from that wall because the King of Glory is inviting you to come through the gate and join him in the garden of grace, mercy, and love. Amen. Standing on the promises of God, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. 
and for all people according to their need. Your word, O God, is our great heritage, wherein you speak to us the words of everlasting life, words of everlasting life which bear witness to him who is the living word, Jesus Christ. Help us to see your gospel as not only the truth, but the truth that can set us free, so that your grace may abound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great Shepherd of the Sheep, continue to raise up within your church pastors and ministers who proclaim your word in all its fullness as true and faithful shepherds of your flock. Give wisdom and strength to those whom you have placed in positions of leadership in this congregation and all congregations everywhere. On this Reformation Sunday, Give us all an awareness of the reality that everything we have comes from your gracious hand in order that we may become the generous stewards that you intend for us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, renew the people of your church throughout the world. We pray for bishops, pastors, and the faithful in the Lutheran Church, the Bishop of Rome and the Roman Catholic Church, the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Angelic Community, the Orthodox Patriots and their fellowships, the Reformed Churches, Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, and all Christians everywhere, that they all may participate in the reformation of the Church as it constantly seeks to do your will at this place and time in history. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Likewise, Lord, renew the leaders of the nations in their commitment for justice and truth, so that there may be lasting peace on earth. Give us, give us our leaders a heart for the poor, oppressed, and needy of not only this land, but of all lands, that our country may be truly a beacon of light, reflecting your hopes and dreams to a world darkened by war, poverty, sickness, terrorism, and prejudice. Especially do we pray for the peace in Ukraine and the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy, hear our pray, prayer. Dear Lord of compassion, renew those who are downcast, heart sick, or in distress. Comfort those who mourn and give hope to those who are sick or hospitalized, that all people may know the truth that makes us free. Especially we lift up to you those on our prayer list, as well as all those whom we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy your amazing grace, and your infinite love. Amen. Gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our well, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.